Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to look at the three-dimensional coordinate system. With the three-dimensional coordinate system, we're just adding another plane. So we're adding the z-plane. So x is the directed distance from the yz-plane, y is the directed distance from the xz-plane, and z is the directed distance from the xy-plane. The planes separate the three-dimensional coordinate system into eight octants. So you can see right here, octant one is all positive, when we go counterclockwise, we're able to get octant two, octant three, and octant four. Octant five will be right below octant one. And then if we again go counterclockwise around, we'll go to octant six, seven, and eight. All right, let's practice plotting the points in space. So point A will be coordinate one, two, three. So that's going to have an X value of one, two units on the Y axis, and three units on the z-axis, and it'll be about here. For B, we'll have negative one on the x, two on the y, and negative three on the z, so it'll be about here. For coordinate C, it'll be negative one for the x, negative two for the y, and negative three for the z. So about here. Just like on a two-dimensional plane, we can find the distance and midpoint. We can do that as well with the three coordinate system. For the distance formula, we actually just need to use the Pythagorean theorem twice to get the formula. The distance is the square root of the sum of all those differences squared. And the midpoint is very similar to what we're used to. We're going to find the average distance between each coordinate. So for example two, we're going to find the distance and then the midpoint. So for the distance, I'm just going to label these. So these points x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2. And remember the distance is just going to be the square root x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. So this will equal the square root 0 minus 3 squared plus negative 1 minus 1 squared plus 2 minus 4 squared. Now let's just simplify. So negative three squared plus negative two squared plus negative two squared. So that'll just be nine plus four and four. So that'll just be square root of 17. For the midpoint, we're also going to take those points and we'll find the average of those values. So I'll have three plus zero over two, add the y, so y one minus two over two, and four plus two over two. So we have three over two, zero, and that'll just be six, so that'll just be three. So we found the distance and the midpoint for those two given points. All right, let's move on to spheres. So thinking about a three-dimensional coordinate system, now we can have three-dimensional figures. The center is now h, k, j. So we can see that now we're just adding that third dimension there in the equation. Instead of finding the zeros, we're going to find the trace. And that's going to be the intersection of the three-dimensional figure with one of the three coordinate planes. All right, here we're going to find the center and the radius of the circle. And you can see that we're going to have to complete the square. Let's group all the terms together. So x squared plus 4x y squared minus 2y, z squared plus 8z, and I'm just going to subtract 10 from both sides. Looking at each term, we're going to complete this square, so that's plus 4, and here we'll have plus 1, and plus 16. So when we factor this, we'll have x plus 2, squared, that's a plus there, y minus 1 squared, 
z plus 4 squared equals 11. So we have the equation there, and we can easily find the center. It'll be negative 2, 1, negative 4. And the radius will just be the square root of 11. All right, now let's think about the trace. We're going to find the x, y trace given this equation. So that means that we're going to plug in 0 for z. So whatever variable is missing in that trace, that will be replaced by 0. So just to simplify, x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared. This will just be 4 squared. So that's just 16. And when we subtract 16 from both sides, we get 9. So we can see that that's an equation of the circle that's going to intersect this x, y plane. Well, that's it for today. We'll go over more examples in class.